Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now inside this package is a graphics card that even after a decade can still be bought new. Its original $159 price tag has subsided a bit and here in the UK I paid just £23.99 with free next day delivery. No it's not a GT710 or an HD5450. It might even be worse than those two at least when it comes to gaming because that was never its original purpose. Without further ado, let me introduce you to the NVS310. It's got 48 cores, DX11 support, and it's based on the Fermi architecture. That's right, thanks to this thing, you can still buy a brand new Fermi GPU in 2022. But please don't, not for gaming. If you want a cheap, reliable multi-monitor solution with a 24 month return to base warranty, then sure, this thing might be just what you're looking for, but it's not and never has been a gaming card. But that won't stop us from trying to game on it today. New driver support ended in 2017, and even Microsoft Edge was shocked that someone was downloading them. Are you sure you're on the right page mate? No one's been here for years. When I first confirmed that yes, I did want to keep the file, I then had to switch to my AM4 based Ryzen system because the card wouldn't work with my 12th gen Intel board. Unfortunately, that did mean that we were stuck with the Ryzen 3 4100 for the rest of the day, but that's the least of our problems. The thing is, it has the X11 but not 12, and even games that should run don't always play nice with the ancient workstation drivers. Cyberpunk crashed, Forza crashed, Far Cry 6 crashed, Deathloop crashed, Elden Ring crashed, and Fortnite, even though it started to load a game, did eventually crash every time at the same point, even with performance mode enabled. So what can we play? Well, the first game I tried after all these crashes was The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which, as you know, has a very deceiving main menu. You might get over 100 frames per second before you've jumped into the game, but afterwards, well, this is the result. As you can see, we're getting about 5, 6 FPS. Now at 720p low, um, with low graphics and low pro post-processing, the game still doesn't look too bad, but unfortunately, doing anything like running or actually moving Geralt in any direction is quite difficult to do. Even if I try and jump, I end up just stuck behind some of the street furniture, as you can see by this example here. Yeah, this isn't exactly what I would call playable by any stretch of the imagination, and I don't think any graphics mods will help us out of this one. When it came to Skyrim Special Edition, admittedly I should have downloaded the original release, but here we are, and once again, we were seeing pretty poor performance, but we were getting double that of the frame rate in Witcher 3, so at least things are improving. White Run still looks pretty nice here. Let's go and steal some cabbages. Oh, sorry, harvest some cabbages. <laughs> I like that word. I'm just going to go next door and harvest my neighbor's Ferrari. As you can see here, the frame rate is picking up a little bit when we look down or look up at the sky but you can't really play the game like that. So once again, Skyrim Special Edition isn't exactly going to be playable on the NVS 310. Now GTA 5 really is quite impressive when it comes to running on older hardware. There are so many graphical options to choose from and even here with 720p low and 50% scaling, so half of 720p, which yeah, it is low, low resolution. That's what it is, it's a pixelated mess, but it does run at 30 frames per second. So that's something. If you really want to play GTA and you've got a limited budget, you've got a budget that's less than the game costs itself to spend on a graphics card, then the NVS 310 can handle it. It won't look very good, but it will run. CSGO didn't do too badly either, though I've never heard anyone say to me that 30 FPS in CSGO is good for competitive play. It certainly is playable, at least against bots like in this situation here, but even then you might find yourself more dead than alive, so bear that in mind. That said, it's not the worst experience in the world and we've certainly had a rougher time in CSGO with different GPUs. Fallout New Vegas, medium was probably a bit of a stretch here, even at 720p, this is the medium preset and even so, we are averaging over 30 FPS, but I do wish I stuck to low now. Fallout New Vegas has never been the most demanding game around, but 
Even with some older hardware, it can be quite problematic, especially in terms of 1% and 0.1% low figures. You can see the frame time graph is sort of all over the place with this NVS card. And finally, we have the Windows version of Minecraft, which actually ran really well with the lowest settings. This is capped at 60 FPS natively at full screen, so 1920 by 1080 with a 60 FPS cap in place here. And nothing I could do could actually shake the frame rate from this solid position. It may look as though there are a couple of uh, little jolts here, but I was using a wireless mouse that I think was sort of giving up as I was playing. It needs a new battery. And yeah, that's where the sort of judders come from because if you take a look at the frame time graph, then things remained pretty smooth. Don't go turning the resolution up or the render distance or the anti-aliasing because that will cause problems. But overall, the MVS310, oh, it's a terrible card for gaming. But it might do someone a good turn if they're looking for a workstation related GPU with a warranty and don't have too much to spend. Maybe you just want to play pixelated GTA 5 or Minecraft with the lowest settings, but there we are. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.